In this week's news, the feds dropped a bomb on who? Syrians? Iranians? Iraqis? Nope, the bomb was dropped right here in the USA. The victims? Companies that sell performance exhaust systems. <laughs> I think you heard that right. Yep, war has been declared. By whom, you may ask? By the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency. The EPA just slammed the owners of Automotive Performance Group with a $3 million fine for selling exhaust systems and components that defeat emission control systems. Now, APG is a company that owns several brands, including Premier Performance, Rally Sport Direct, uh, JB Automotive, Stage 3 Motorsports, FT86 Speed Factory, and Subi Speed. This is the latest legal action in the ongoing war between the EPA and companies selling performance parts for street-driven cars and trucks. In this particular case, the EPA presented some pretty compelling evidence. According to them, and as shown here, there were more than 64,000 pieces of emission control delete items allegedly shipped to buyers. As you can probably guess, that was a problem. The result was a $3 million fine, which was levied after APG didn't admit to, but didn't deny any of the allegations. This isn't the first time the EPA has gone after diesel performance or automotive aftermarket performance companies. In fact, it's happened several times in the last 10 or 11 years. In February 2020, for example, Freedom Performance was fined $7.05 million for the same thing. Spartan Diesel was hit with uh, 4.1 million for about 5,000 separate violations of what was called the Clean Air Act way back in 2018, which is now three years ago. KT Performance uh, in Florida allegedly sold over 2,800 delete products for diesels between 2013 and 2018. They were charged about $52,000 and change for fines. Fines were levied against several other companies, including Punch It Performance, which is where all of this started. Another company called Performance Diesel, Diesel Power Products, Alligator Diesel, uh, Deviant Race Parts, and Innovative Diesel, Airfish Diesel, and Diesel Works, to name a few. I'm sure there's probably others. Even my old employer, Magnaflow Performance Exhaust, was hit with a $612,000 fine a couple years ago, and Flowmaster had to pay up about $270,000 for alleged violations. And if you think this is happening only to diesel companies, you'd be wrong. Apex Integration was fined $5,000 in August of 2020. Weiss Tech, a famous Benz tuner, was hit with about $8,500 in fines recently. And even OBX Racing was hit with fines of about $25,000 or so. So essentially, the EPA is on the warpath and the stakes couldn't be higher, not just for us, but for the companies that make these parts. According to a study by EPA's Air Enforcement Division of the impact of known sales of defeat devices for certain diesel trucks between 2009 and 2020, they found that these devices would put 570,000 tons of pollution and 5,000 tons of particulate matter into the atmosphere over the lifetime of these trucks. That's kind of a big deal. In 2017, the Utah Physicians for a Healthy Environment filed what it claims was the first Clean Air Act citizen suit against companies selling defeat devices. In other words, a company sued another company for dirtying the air. There's a law that al allows private citizens to file lawsuits to enforce admission standards. Their targets of the lawsuit was Diesel Brothers, a company that rose to stardom in television. You guys have probably heard the story in the news. It was a year or two ago. Diesel Brothers end up getting fined 850,000 bucks and now their website shows only apparel, overland and truck accessories and no more performance parts. And this fight has been going on for years. SEMA has made efforts to find some middle ground with the EPA, but frankly, they're really not accomplishing much. And what inroads that they had made were effectively erased when the EPA changed its interpretation of a previous clarification that was issued some 50 years ago, literally. The interpretation does not coincide with the notes from the committee that actually drafted the Clean Air Act way back in 1970. These notes were uncovered by a lawyer who was commissioned by the 24 Hours of Lemons racing series. And if you haven't heard of it, you should Google it. These notes from that discussion from 1970 prove that the original authors of the Clean Air Act had no intention of regulating race cars of any type. This has been the understanding for nearly five decades. However, the EPA appears to have now changed its interpretation of that law. The EPA says the proposed changes are only meant to clarify the rules, but the proposed clarifications make it explicitly clear that street vehicles which have been modified for racing are not exempt from emission laws. What? We gotta think about what that means. Essentially it means that any race car that started life as a street car 
would be required to run all of the factory emissions equipment if you turned it into a race car. Can you imagine that? Let me be even more clear. What I'm saying is that under the new interpretation, it essentially means that all race cars that use engines from production cars are now effectively illegal. The EPA is not even shy about this new distinction. And if you read this, quote, existing regulations are already explicit and clear that the off-road exemption is not available for motor vehicles. Okay. <laughs> then who is it for? And it goes on to say, despite this clarity, manufacturers of aftermarket defeat devices for motor vehicles have falsely claimed that motor vehicles are eligible for the off-road exemption if we're gonna use it for racing. EPA is saying no, we're saying yes. Like those existing provisions, the proposed language would, going forward, draw a clear line to prevent confusion about whether the off-road competition exemption is available for motor vehicles. It should be noted that had this interpretation always been in place, as the EPA claims it was, NASCAR would have been illegal at the time that the Clean Air Act became law in 1970. Basically, NASCAR was still using production vehicles, so NASCAR would have been illegal starting in 1970. And now today, this new interpretation has far-reaching potential. As the Lemons attorney pointed out, this doesn't just mean a catalytic converter delete is a problem. It means a whole there, there are a whole bunch of other implications. It could also be applied to every vehicle component that affects emissions, which could include everything from camshafts to even the gas tank, believe it or not. And since nearly every race sanctioning body requires a fuel cell, this would make all production based cars ineligible to race to be raced because they come with gas tanks and you can't modify that. It all depends on how far the EPA wants to take its interpretation of the law. And from what we're seeing is they want to take it all away. The biggest victims of this clarification would be the aftermarket companies that make these performance parts. It's going to be Carmageddon for them. Not only would catalytic converter delete kits be illegal, but any part which affects the vehicle emission system could be considered illegal. And that's open to broad interpretation now. That would mean, of course, things like E85 kits gone, no aftermarket supercharger kits, no cob access ports, no speed density conversions, no test pipes, no down pipes on turbo cars, not even cold air intake systems. Unless, of course, you have the CARB executive order number. So basically, with their products made illegal, many of these companies will simply go out of business because there's only really one alternative. The only thing that these companies can do to stand a chance of survival is if and only if they have the necessary resources to recertify or certify all of the parts with an authority like the California Air Resources Board. So you get that little EO number that's stamped on every part and has to be displayed under the hood of your car. What that effectively means is that most of the hot rodding and tuner world, specifically the small to mid-sized companies which make up much of the aftermarket, will simply be regulated out of business if the EPA carries out its enforcement activities far enough. The EPA has been on a mission to clean up the air for decades. I don't think that's a secret to anybody, certainly not to, certainly not to anybody who lives in California. I grew up in California here in the 1970s. The sky was very brown uh, anytime it got over 80 degrees. I wheezed when I took a breath and our PE classes and grade school were canceled many times because of smog alerts. The air was brown here. You look outside today, it's quite different. 50 years later, it's much better, but not perfect. I get it. And no way any irrational person can complain about wanting to have clean air for our children. I get it and I agree with it. But good grief, there's gotta be some middle ground. So let me put this in clear, plain English. The feds don't want modified cars on the road at all. California doesn't want them. And just because your state may not be doing smog checks or where you live, you're still in violation of the federal law when you delete any emissions components. They don't even want performance parts to be shipped here to the US from other countries. They haven't found a way to stop that yet though. They don't care about the companies that sell automotive performance parts, nor do they care about what happens to those jobs. As one politician said, you should become a computer programmer. Okay. The EPA's new interpretation of the rules now includes tampering with emissions controls, even on race cars. It was always that way for streetcars, but now they're talking about that on race cars. In the EPA's eyes, if the engine came from a streetcar and went into a race car, it must still have the emissions controls that it left the factory with. In California, if you get popped by the cops and they tell you to pop the hood, not only do you have to comply, but you'll probably end up with a referee ticket, which means your car goes to a special inspection station. And when they're done with you, that means putting every single stock part back on the car. In 2035, production of internal combustion engines will end at General Motors. That includes diesels. Think about that for a moment. 2035, that's 14 years away. 
Europe has said that internal combustion engines are on their last lap, meaning that they're about to go extinct. More than nine countries and a dozen cities or states throughout the world have announced what the media has called bans in the, fast, in the, in the last few years. Norway will phase out conventional cars by 2025, followed by France and Great Britain in 2040 and 2050, respectively. However, although these politicians talk a good game, none of these countries have actually put any laws into place, nor have any new regulations been placed on the books. So right now it's just talk. But let's be honest, we know it's coming. It is coming. That seems to be the time, like 2035, 2040, that's it. The auto performance market effectively now will just continue to shrink from this point on until eventually it disappears and by that time we'll all be in electric cars anyway. Essentially we are living in the golden age of performance cars. Think about this. Kids born today will see the transition from internal combustion to electric vehicles and their kids will probably never drive a car with an internal combustion engine. Quite frankly, I don't think politicians have thought this through. EVs take hours to charge with current technology. Building the infrastructure that would support fast charging for these cars would take decades, especially in California, where almost 40 million cars are on the road. And the state of California can't even keep the electricity flowing when the winds start blowing here in Southern California. When it gets hot and the winds blow, they shut the power off so the power lines don't catch on fire and fall on the ground and start a brush fire. And with 40 million people in California, imagine plugging in 30 million electric cars every day. And so while SEMA holds on by a fingernail, the simple fact of the matter is this, the days of modifying cars with combustion engines are coming to an end and it's gonna happen in our lifetime. That's gonna be it for this time, everybody. Thanks for watching, and if you like my content, please don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.